um, some of these uh, resources with you. I, I just want to make sure that people are um, are aware uh, of the resources. Erin, someone just asked, I think, if this is being recorded, and I want to make sure that we're recording this. Um, we are. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yep. I, didn't I will the post the link uh, to the recordings in the chat for you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Sure. Um, I didn't see the little record link, so I wasn't quite sure where it was or what, I, what was going on. So good. Um, so that was from uh, uh, Goretti, I think was um, Goretti was uh, asking about it's being recorded. So good. Um, all right. Uh, so Aaron um, has posted the link uh, to this web page. This is the SUNY Online teaching website. Uh, it's a blog and where we um, have a lot of our resources. Most of our resources are here in this website. And this is a page on that website and, and the link has been posted. Um, she uh, so these resources are the focus of the talk today. These we're calling self-paced and self-serve resources. So it's basically um, a, a bunch of stuff that we've developed and that we have that are either uh, the nature of them is either as a self-paced. Um, um, professional development activity or as something that you can use to um, as a self-serve resource so you can come here and download it or or um, use it click on it and use it and I'm just going to go through all of the resources so that you can see what's here uh, but um, you know you uh, will probably want to explore any of the resources that catch your eye that are of interest or, or relevant to you in more detail detail there is a lot of stuff here so um, so the first thing that I want to show you are some of the self-paced things so this is um, you know could be of interest to anyone who is um, interested in what it takes to teach online it's a set of um, inventories or sort of self-assessments that will ask you questions about your technical skills and capabilities it also presents some videos um, for example the common myths you can also so observe some online courses. I'll show that more in a second. Um, there are some student videos here. There are some faculty videos here, researchers um, and, um, and others all talking about what it means to teach and learn online. And so I invite anyone to come and check this out. I do a whole session on this, one of these webinars. So stay tuned for that. Um, that one and the interested in teaching online course, they're kind of a um, a combination. They, they're they kind of two halves of the coin. You do the readiness one first and then you um, are ready to start the interested in teaching online self-paced course. So um, I, I'm just showing you that they are here and if you're interested you can click around and on these web pages and and check them out and then um, you know later in the fall um, or throughout the year we do uh, webinars that are specifically um, dedicated to these resources. I mentioned earlier the um, uh, courses for observation um, um, features, uh, um, resource that we have available. So if you're an instructional designer or if you're a faculty person and are interested in some discipline specific resources, uh, we have um, in, in this resource, uh, um, posted with permission of the instructor um, the the links to their courses so this is the the instructional design of these courses the courses themselves all their materials there's no interaction and there's no um, student um, information in these courses and as I mentioned it's all with the permission of the instructor these are are um, nominated by the campus and um, uh, for being exemplary and uh, are there as models for any instructional designer to use as they're working with faculty or for any faculty who are interested in seeing how other faculty either in their own discipline or in other disciplines have designed um, uh, their courses uh, when you um, 
one of the things I want to make sure you know is that not only have the instructors given permission for these courses to be posted in this way, but you also have permission to adapt instructional documents from these courses or approaches. So, um, so if there is a way that the instructor has done um, a particular thing, like for example, their course information, their class community activities, their instructional um, documents for particular activities, the instructors have um, agreed to be um, models for, for you and for you to be able to adopt and, and adapt um, um, their approaches. Uh, another um, and oh, let me just show you that we have some mathematics courses, we have some technology courses. This is small, so it's not intended for you to read. But if you click on these links, you'll get into our Blackboard system. And um, you will need to authenticate into our Blackboard system in order to see everything that's there and, and available to you. The, um, it, you can click on them just from this page, uh, but you will need to authenticate in order to see everything. Um, and up at the top, if you have any problems, you can contact our help desk and they'll help you get into the courses for observation. I know that's been a bit of a challenge in the past, we've, but we've been working on this issue and feel like we have a good Good process for that now. So the tech, these are the tech courses, these are the health sciences courses. Um, let's see what else we have here. We have some humanities courses, um, language courses, some social science courses, and some education courses. So there's a, a nice variety here. You're able to see when you click around, um, even if you click in courses that are not your, in your discipline, you're able to see how instructors have made instructional and pedagogical decisions in how they present their content, how they facilitate interaction and collaboration um, in, in the design of the activities and, and how they intend to provide feedback or or um, or assessments. Um, so I invite you to check these um, cool resources out that are available here for you. Um, I've also put together the, uh, for instructional designers and for faculty this interesting decision tree and it was kind of an exercise um, this is a wireframe, um, really, uh, and maybe instructional designers will be most um, interested in this. Um, it's draft right now. I haven't finished it yet, and ultimately, I hope that it will be um, an application that is easier to navigate and to see and understand so that as you go down the the, the decision branches, you ultimately get to some resources that will help you um, uh, with, with the particular uh, type of online learning that you will be doing. So, you know, there is self-paced online learning, there is um, synchronous um, uh, online learning using Zoom or, um, or Collaborate or some kind of a webinar tool. Um, there's asynchronous online learning, there's a blend of, of online learning. And so this was intended to help in the decision making to understand um, what type of online course you will be working on and then provide you with some uh, tools and tips and resources to help you um, with that particular type of online uh, course. Um, so um, sort of, uh, you know, in conjunction with that, we've developed some um, resources for remote teaching. Um, and I want to, um, yes, John, maybe Aaron can um, share with you the link. But if you go to that first page, the, there is a link off of that first self-paced and, and uh, self-serve resources. Maybe Aaron can grab it. Um, so this checklist is intended to be a checklist, you can actually click on these little um, checks here. Uh, but it's also just a website that presents information for folks who will be um, and are teaching uh, remotely. Um, and so there, there are some got some tips, some resources, and a ton of information. I do a whole other session just on this checklist. So I am going to invite you to browse through all of the different uh, areas and um, um, and all of the different resources that are posted here for folks who um, are teaching um, remotely. Um, so let's see what else I have for you. Um, 
the discipline specific resources. So I already showed you the courses for observation, but for those of you who are, whether you're an instructional designer or an instructor, we have pulled together um, and created some resources that are specific for, um, for people interested in looking at discipline specific things. Um, so there's the courses for observation. We have in our workplace group, uh, a workplace area, we have some discipline specific affinity groups. So if you want to talk with other faculty about physics or about um, teaching um, French online or some language online, there are groups that are are there um, waiting for you to join uh, to share what you know and to learn from others um, who uh, may be in your same discipline. Um, Oh, and so uh, we've also put together some um, Google Docs to share resources with each other. And so this is the Google Docs on info of the visual and the performing arts, social sciences, um, STEM, and humanities. So um, I just want to make sure that if that's an interest uh, for you, or if you have something that you would like to share with others, you can go to those pages and browse the stuff that's there there um, and add any resources that are your favorites in those particular areas so that we can collaboratively co-create and continue to enhance this document for the benefit of all of us. Uh, so I, I appreciate um, everyone's contributions to that and, um, and, and hope you will check it out. Um, there's also some OER services that are discipline specific um, that I'd like to have you to know about. Um, so if you're looking for um, textbooks or, or um, materials, uh, content for your course, there are a number of uh, freely available or, or uh, OER available materials. And we have folks within the community that can um, guide you and help you in, um, in the adoption of any of these resources. I don't know if Tony or Mike are on, um, on the call, but, um, uh, but we have folks within the community that would um, be uh, eager and willing to help you with that. Um, all right, so let's go on to the next one. So these are some of the resources that we collected that are not specific to remote teaching or synchronous online teaching. These are um, specific to synchronous, asynchronous online teaching, and, and that's really um, what our unit has been doing for the last 25 years, um, really trying to understand how people teach and learn well in a fully asynchronous environment. And so these are the resources that are available. Um, uh, and under each of these links are, are a ton more links. So, um, so I think that this um, would be a, a really good thing to come back and revisit when you have some time to really go through um, the materials. Uh, for an instructional designer who might be working with faculty or for faculty who are looking for some additional um, information or tools or tips or resources, I think this is a really good um, place to come and, and, um, and browse and, and dig into it so that you can see what's there and, and who, um, you know, all of this stuff has been um, being researched and developed over the last 20 plus years. So if you're just new and starting out now, um, there's no need to reinvent wheels. There is a lot that is known about how to teach and learn well online. And we wanna make sure that you know about it and that we share uh, this information with you. And that goes for instructional designers too, who may be new or who um, are just looking to um, supplement um, their toolkit with, uh, with some tools and resources and materials that we have been um, um, developing or curating over the last um, many years. So um, I do another whole session, um, one of these webinar sessions on Oscar that you might be familiar with the um, SUNY Online Course Quality um, Review Rubric and Process. And I want to make sure that you know that this is available to you. If you're an instructor, you can use this as a self-assessment tool to help 
guide the design of the instructional design of your course um, with uh, standards that will help you understand um, you know what the effective practices uh, are uh, their re the, this rubric is research based and nationally um, endorsed by the online learning consortium as their online course quality scorecard we have um, most SUNY campuses um, are have adopted this uh, this rubric and process and we have um, you know hundreds of other uh, institutions outside of SUNY that have also adopted this tool uh, so if you're interested in this you can browse around um, but stay tuned or, or keep your eye out for another webinar that's just on Oscar we're also uh, doing some trainings I think in the fall on Oscar so if you're interested in that um, uh, you know uh, check out the SUNY CPD uh, events uh, calendar website so that you um, if you're interested in in taking the training um, to become a reviewer um, or uh, to self-assess your own uh, course um, we we will have those um, webinars um, sometime this fall I believe um, all right so back to the self-paced and self-serve resources page one of the main things I wanted to chat with you today were the templates that we've produced and made available um, for a download and import into uh, into Blackboard or if you're in another learning management system the common cartridges are posted there um, so that you can um, load the um, uh, the templates into whatever your learning management system is other than Blackboard. And I just wanted to go over with you um, sort of the design and structure of the templates. Again, these are available openly and freely from this page. You can click on that link. It will download the cartridge, the, the zip file that you can then um, uh, import into Blackboard or whatever your learning management system is um, and so I just wanted to introduce you to these templates and um, um, let you know that they're entirely customizable entirely open and free to use um, so um, what I would say is that if you're an instructor to first check with your instructional designer or your teaching and learning center or your online or distance learning office to make sure that um, you know you are following whatever your campus um, resources and tools and whatever they support um, to make sure that you are um, aware of, of what that is before going forward with any of these um, self-paced um, activities or, or these downloadable tools. I, I just want to make sure that, um, that folks check in with their campus and their instructional design team uh, so that um, you know so that we're not stepping on on each other or cross purposes or duplicating efforts so these templates um we have shared with um, with all of the SUNY campus instructional designers, online instructional designers. This one in particular that we're looking at right now is designed for a primarily synchronous online course using Zoom. So all of the materials in the um, course are targeted to a primarily synchronous online course using Zoom. Um, so the course starts on a page that is called Start Here. And that presents all of your um, syllabus and um, um, uh, course information documentation. Um, and all of this is customizable, editable. Um, if you don't like a particular thing or if your campus has a different, um, you know, uh, resource that they would prefer to use you can just rip that out and replace it you can rip it out entirely you can edit any of the text um, it's just here you know so that new online synchronous online instructors don't face a blank blackboard shell and it's just here to quick start faculty um, 
I know some campuses have adopted um, and adapted this template and are using it with all of their um, courses and faculty and some are using it in other ways. So I just want to make sure that you see it and that you, you know that it's here. Um, so these are some um, additional um, areas of, of this primarily synchronous Zoom focused course. So um, it, it's there to again help quick start the faculty so for example, you'll see here it says put your picture or welcome video here. Um, you'll need to check with your instructional design support uh, folks to help you create a video if, if uh, you don't know how to do that. Um, but it, it's, or you can just rip it out and just put your own name. Uh, like I said, it's totally, totally customizable. Uh, but it's intended, like I said, to quick start folks into having a, um, a, a, a well designed um, um, course so that you don't have to, like I said, face a, a blank page there. Um, so here are the Zoom, uh, the, the Zoom specific, here is the Zoom specific page and resources. Um, you would, um, this is for the students, so the Zoom link would be here for students. Um, links to the recorded Zoom sessions would be posted here. There's some um, expectations uh, here about using Zoom. Again, you can customize these um, for your own, um, uh, you know, with your own uh, content. Um, it's just uh, boiler, uh, you know, boilerplate kind of um, documentation that we put together. Um, to, to give something for faculty to, um, to start with. Uh, so this, the course schedule, um, you can see here, and this is one of the differences between all the different versions of the, of the modules. Obviously, um, in a primarily synchronous course, you're going to do it on a weekly basis, most likely, and there will be dates associated with that. Of course, there will be readings um, and other um, content and assignments and, and assessments associated with it. Um, but there will also be a Zoom meeting time, and so we want to make sure that in the course schedule those things are documented and presented to the students in a, in a, you know in a in a course schedule kind of a way again you can use other tools or other ways of doing this this is just to get you started and thinking about what is important um, to make sure your students have available to them um, so we put together some documentation on um, what it means to to be um, a remote student. Again, customizable. Um, again, these are expectations um, of students in Zoom environments. Uh, and so you'll want to read through that if you're going to adopt this template and make sure that it is reflective of you and your course and your campus policies and, and, um, and approaches. Um, did I just do that one? Oh, here. Um, the, uh, the, this is just a couple of the um, weekly um, folders set up for you uh, to go in and, and customize. Um, and so just some boilerplate text there to get you going. Um, and there was, um, we set up an ice breaking discussion just so that you could see how that might be done. Um, and again, totally customizable, um, you know, if you want to do it differently or in a different way um, uh, or using different uh, tools, um, you could have a, a, a discussion, you could have it, you could use voice thread for your icebreaker, you could do um, your ice breaking in, in lots of different ways, but this is just one way uh, to get you going. Um, okay. What did I miss here? Um, this is still the Zoom template. Zoom, we did that one already. And now, oh, I wanted to point out the, um, the find help here resources, the tech resources and the faculty resources. So here, because this is a template, you'd have to replace some of these links and typically an instructional designer would do this for the instructor to make sure that it's going to whatever the, you know, campus resources are for these various um, elements. And, um, and then these are the tech resources for the students, so there's some Zoom Zoom Help Center a link to that. That's the official Zoom Help Center and the official Blackboard uh, site for students. And then I've um, 
posted some instructor resources for uh, for faculty um, so that it's right there in the course and they don't have to go around to lots of different websites to find information. So uh, so there, these are sort of like self-help resources within the course. And so there's a bunch of how-to resources as well. Um, and you can see there are lots of um, Blackboard resources as well as uh, sort of pedagogically focused resources, um, as well as um, um, you can see there's a ton of stuff here. Um, you know, anything that the instructor might need to help them with a primarily synchronous online uh, course pedagogy, uh, they're likely to find here. Um, all right, so that was the how to's. And, um, and then, of course, there's the Blackboard help for faculty and those faculty resources as well. All right, so that was the Zoom one. Um, I also created, we also created a template that um, is also a primarily synchronous course, but uses Collaborate, which is the tool within Blackboard. The, and, um, and so all of the, um, the synchronous component documentation within the course will be about Collaborate. So these tools are similar. These webinar tools are very similar, but they have, you know, different ways that they're used and accessed and the help resources and the how-to resources are different. So I created one uh, to quick start faculty if they're using Collaborate. And so you can see it's essentially, it's exactly the same template, except the Zoom stuff is replaced with, um, with Collaborate. Um, um, so let me just show you. So here's the, the um, collaborate room instead of Zoom room area there in the in the in the message. Um, sorry, in the um, menu on the left. Uh, so here's where you would. Um, create and link to the collaborate rooms and then collaborate expectations which are, which are essentially the same as for Zoom except, you know, modified for collaborate. Um, similar course schedule except it says collaborate meeting time. Very similar um, resources except all of the resources for the students are collaborate resources you can see over here on the left and the faculty um, resources are also um, instead of Zoom are collaborate resources. All right, so then the next template is for blended and hybrid um, um, courses and that means that the course has both synchronous um, and um, uh, synchronous face-to-face -face and asynchronous online um, combined, right? So we just did the ones that were primarily synchronous online. This one is for um, some of the courses that might have some face-to-face -face activity and some um, online activity. And that online activity might be synchronous online or it might be um, asynchronous online or it might be both. So in this template, it has everything. And this one you definitely we will have to, um, you know, go in and customize because if you're not using Collaborate, all the Collaborate stuff just needs to be deleted. If you're not using Zoom, the Zoom stuff would need to be deleted. Um, so it's just meant to help you to quick start into um, a, a blended course environment that may or may not be using Zoom or Collaborate. So if you're doing blend where it's face to face and fully online, you can rip out all of the synchronous stuff. Um, and, you know, generally the way that I've seen this used is that instructional designers are prepping the template for the instructors and then distributing that um, to all of their faculty or to departments or to select faculty, however it is that they're doing it. Um, so it's, it's essentially the same exact template except that it has both the collaborate and the um, the Zoom instructions. There is a little bit of a difference in um, in the course schedule, you can see here um, that when you're moving from um, um, primarily synchronous to blended, um, you're still working on a weekly schedule, but 
you know, you might want to, um, and this is, you know, just a recommendation to um, chunk the content of your course into modules. And, um, and of course, you can do it um, however you like, but this is um, the way that we've presented it in the template. Um, all right. So, yeah, so here's the course schedule. You can see it's a little bit different. The, the, the synchronous online ones were weekly focused. This one has modules as well as weeks. Uh, and then there's a line here, a column here that will help the students see that if, if the class is live uh, face to face, if it's online or um, synchronous or if it's online fully, um, you know, fully asynchronous. Um, so, yeah. Uh, here's the, the stuff that we put together about learning in a blended um, or hybrid uh, manner and some expectations and then again some of the um, Zoom and collaborate information that you would use or not use depending on if you're doing that. Um, and again, um, you know, some templated uh, files for your, the content for your modules in this environment um, and um, and the resources again as I mentioned over here on the left hand side um, would be um, need would need to be customized depending on if you're doing any of the synchronous activities the last template I want to show you is the fully online asynchronous uh, online course template and um, and some of the unique things about this are if you're fully online, you're going to want to do um, uh, modules instead of weeks. Uh, a fully online course, really, each chunk of content of your course really should cover about two weeks of material. Um, and so that is reflected here in the course schedule. Um, we have set up um, some modules here um, to get you started um, that are editable and then replicable um, to complete all of the chunks of your course. And then here, the how-to resources are um, uh, specifically for asynchronous online learning. And so we have a ton of information to share with faculty about how to teach in this particular modality. Um, we, we've been doing this for a very long time and, and have developed and curated and produced um, lots and lots of resources to help faculty and instructional designers understand how to teach and, and, um, and uh, design courses uh, online. So I'm hoping that you will um, take advantage of, um, of all of the stuff that people have uh, done before you, everything that we know and everything that we've done, we've learned from faculty like you who are on the call. Um, we've had the chance to observe thousands and thousands of online faculty and hundreds of thousands of online students and done research on, um, on different approaches and pedagogies and, and activities online and uh, have been part of the online teaching and learning um, broader community for, for years and want to make sure that you don't have, that you know that you don't have to start from scratch, uh, that you are able to um, learn from those who've come before you and leverage the tools and resources that are made available through the SUNY online teaching unit um, to help you. And um, so we're here for, for you and want to make sure that you are aware of the resources. So Alex, I have a question for you from sure. Maureen. Sure. Um, so Maureen was wondering if these um, templates are available on the SUNY Blackboard site um, for people to review. So what she has done at Orange is um, put these courses, like the, um, the template on her server for one of them, and then enrolled faculty in it so that they could see the course first. Yep. Um, is that something we have? So do we have these templates in our Blackboard system? They do exist in our Blackboard system. Um, I, they're right now, you know, I think me and Rob, maybe you, Erin, are the only ones that are in there. If you were interested, so Maureen, is the question that you want to have faculty be able to look at them? Hi, Alex. Yeah, so what I did with the Zoom template in the summer when we had first showed those, since most of us would be using Zoom, 
I downloaded the Zoom template, made a course on our Blackboard server, and then I enrolled the faculty so they could get an idea of it. Mm -hmm. And some of these others I really like, especially the hybrid one. Mm -hmm. But instead of me putting it online and enrolling my faculty, I was wondering if they, just like you have courses for observation, are these up there for observation as well? Then they, I could just give them the link and they could just jump up to the SUNY site and look. So the, so that's an interesting question and I would be happy to facilitate that if that's what you really want. I, I will tell you that in order to look at stuff in our Blackboard system, faculty have to authenticate. That means they need a separate account in our Blackboard system and we have had a challenge getting faculty in, right? So if your faculty already have those accounts because they're looking at the courses for observation, it's not a problem. But it, it, it the other challenge, the, that's one of the challenges is actually they're gonna have to create a separate account. The other challenge is that it will have a wrapper of SUNY Online, not your campus. Right. And so one of the things that I think makes more sense is if for you to import it into your system and customize it with your links, like, you know, there were those areas that, right. Right. It says replace with whatever and campus policies, etc. Yeah, 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 because it's it's hard, especially for the very brand new COVID -y type faculty. Right. It's really, really hard for them to, you know, sort of dispense with some of the stuff that you know they, they see a link and, and they think that's the link, right? They they don't have any frame of reference or context to right. maybe make that leap. And so if they could see it with your banner and with your campus information, I think it's gonna be better for them. Easier. Yes, you're a hundred percent right. You're a hundred percent they don't have to deal with calling our help desk to help them get an account, <laughs> right? Like it's just so daunting. People just any kind of little glitch like that is gonna they're they're gonna potentially turn away and not come back do you know what I mean like if yes, it's exactly any glitch um, especially with the the COVID faculty right right um we've seen this uh, through the emergency um drop-in service that we did from March until May and then now with faculty that we're working with um with uh, some selected campuses um it, it, it's it's just really it's really easy to lose them if any little thing happens it's it's hard for them to to you know they have to develop that resilience and one of the differences one of the problems is that both faculty and students affected by having to be forced online um, you know, during this time, they didn't choose it, right? This is happening to them, kind of, and it's for both students and faculty. And exactly. so um, I'm very sensitive to that and, and very aware of, of the difficulties and the challenges. And, um, and even on a good day when someone has signed up for it and wants to do it and whatever, it's, you know, you have to build up resiliency and tolerance to technology technology challenges like for you and me and and many of us um, who work in this space and have for many many years we develop a resilience to technology not working like the zoom room this morning not working right? yeah. <laughs> like, you know um, for somebody who and we probably lost people on the call because of that but but um you know you you just know that there are some people who are just not going to be able to bounce with whatever happens. So I want to try and minimize that. So my recommendation to you would be, I'd be happy to put them up um, in our course. We could even put them in our courses for observation area. I'd be happy to do that. But um, I think it's going to work much better for you if you, um, you know, suck them into your system and customize. Yeah, no, I agree. I, you're absolutely right there. And if I could customize even something as simple as like our own policies. Yes, yes. Our student handbook and stuff. That's yeah, things they need yeah. anyway, and it would already be there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then they can start to see themselves. I mean, the whole purpose of these templates is for faculty to be able to open them up and to see and, and to see themselves, to see their course, to see the possibilities for their content in a, in a way that they wouldn't if they 
they are just open up to a blank blackboard shell, right? It's so daunting for any faculty, for anyone actually, to, to hit that blank page. And so this helps them um, say, okay, here's the wrapper, right? It's sort of like instructional documentation and a, a little bit of structure. And then they can say, okay, I can start to see how my content, how my approaches, how my objectives might be able to be um, reconceptualized in this particular um, type of environment. And, and it helps them focus on the things that are important as a po you know, which is about their content and how they want to teach it and how they want to facilitate whatever it is that they're, they're facilitating um, uh, based on their objectives, then having to think about all the rest of that wrapper stuff, right? And from the instructional designer perspective, you can customize it so that that wrapper is consistent to your campus. And, um, and you can have some consistency from the student experience perspective and from the help desk perspective to help students succeed. That's one of the elements that will, um, that, you know, we know has an impact on student success. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so any other questions? I'm looking at the, um, yeah, I, this is Stephanie from SUNY Adirondack. I'm faculty. And if I want to, I downloaded the zip file and then I just go to upload and then it's asking me if for a cartridge key or am I in the wrong spot? So, um, First, I would say to talk to Paul or to somebody on your campus to make sure that it's okay that you do this. Okay. And, and then in order, I, I'm not sure, I think it's Paul McLean who's at yes. your campus. Mm -hmm. um, then you would come here and import course cartridge and then you would just um, take that, um, that zip file and use this import feature under the packages and utilities area. And then it will bring the template in. Um, once you bring the template in, you have to do some finagling with it. And so there is a template guide uh, here that you'll need to do use in order to get the menu to look like this because okay. the template does not suck in this menu is manually created. It sucks some of it in, but there's still some stuff that's in there and you need to, you know, look at the, look at the template guide um, so that you can see how it's supposed to look and then make it look like that. Does okay. that help? Yes, thank you. All right, be sure to check with Paul though. I, I don't wanna step on anyone's toes, okay? Sure. Any other questions is Aaron? Uh, no, but uh, we did have someone else who was getting the message for a download key also, and I'm not sure why that's happening. I don't see in the admin panel, I don't see a uh, download no, key no to give people. Key. It shouldn't be. You should just be able to download the, um, the zip file, and I've done it a million times. You download the zip file, and then you import it into your Blackboard system, unless there's something, you know, set at the Maybe you don't have permissions to do that. If That's you're, what I'm wondering. If you're yeah, faculty, so I definitely, if you're getting that, I definitely would check with your instructional designer or your distance learning office um, to to see because um, uh, you know there may be something in the system preventing you from from. Alex. Yeah. Hi, this is Maureen. If you choose import a course cartridge, which is probably what they're doing, it's going to ask you for a key. They need. They don't need to choose the import course cartridge. They need to um, import, package. import right. the package. Mm -hmm. It's a package. It's not a course cartridge. It's even not though a course cartridge. It's a package. Okay, right. let me just go back and see. It's Packages cheaper. and utilities, and then Here import a package. Yep. So yep. Sorry about that. Yep. This is it. And then import package. It's just a, a terminology thing. Yep. All right. Yep. Thanks, Maureen. Yep. So I need to make sure that I've got that language right here. Uh, so it's generic here, so good, okay. All right, cool. Anybody else, anything else? I think that was it. I'm happy to stay here and chat with anyone. Um, I do wanna ma make sure that you know that we do these webinars regularly. Um, we just started doing a registration for it and actually I'm glad we did it for today because that way we could message everybody. Um, uh, so the, the link for the registration is at the CPD site. Erin, what's the next one coming up? 
Uh, the next one is on the, um, the uh, online teaching checklist that you showed briefly earlier. Um, and that is September 3rd, and I'm putting the registration in the uh, chat right now. So okay. if anybody wants to go and see, you can see the whole lineup there. Um, we have registration for workshops all the way through the end of December. Hey, Stephanie, I was just browsing the chat and I see you like my little kitty cat. Um, so the way that I do that, it's a, um, it's a Firefox add-on and it, it, I just, I hope you can see my screen. Um, you just go to the add-on, um, you pull down the tools menu in Firefox and, um, and it, um, and go to the add-on area. It's a, the, it says add-ons and then you search for, um, I think it's animated cat and you get a, I've had a couple of different ones, but this one is my favorite. I really like it. <laughs> okay, nice. Thank you. Yep. All right. And